Hello, Instagram family. We are officially live for Branded, the live training that is going to open up a brand new conversation around content and what it means to be a creative entrepreneur. So if you set your notifications, you're likely getting on right now. So let me know once you're in the room. I'd love to see that you're here. I'm going to get my notes together and we're going to dive right in because today is one of those days that I feel like we can work with as a way to shift something really monumental. And if you're just joining this live stream off chance, like you didn't plan to be on it, this would be one of the ones that I ask you to stay on because it could really awaken something beautiful for you. We're going to open up a brand new conversation around content, what it means to create and have a brand online, what it means to be a leader and an innovator. And this is going to be a breath of fresh air. For some of you, this is going to be the exhale that you've been waiting for and one of those things that clicks immediately. So I'm very, very excited. I have a whole bunch of energy buzzing through my body. So as you're getting on, you're going to want to grab a notebook and a pen. You're going to want to make sure that you're present, that you can fully receive for this next 45 minutes. I have a lot that I want to cover and a lot that I want to go through with you. And again, if you just happen to find this serendipitously and you're, you're on and you're like, I don't know who this person is, we are about to have a life-changing conversation around content creation. We're about to have a life-changing conversation around social media and what it means to be an innovator online, what it means to not just have a brand, but to lead a brand and have your life be at the center of it from a state of vitality, from a state of peace. So when I say let's ride, we're about to take a completely different angle. We're about to take everything that we thought we needed to do this year to be successful online. We're going to turn it on its head. We're going to evoke something different and elicit a new response from your audience and your community. So the first thing that I want you to do is just take a deep breath and allow yourself to fully arrive and use your exhale to meticulously and intelligently pull yourself forward. Remove any distractions. Whatever you were doing before this, if you're on this live stream and you chose to make it here live, let this be, for this moment, the most important thing. Let it shape you, let it change you, let it rattle you, let it have its way with you. Give yourself to this moment. Give yourself to what's on the precipice. Give yourself to the edge that you're on right now. Give yourself to the momentum that you can feel in your bones, around your business, around your income, around what it means to be a leader. You're not gonna learn anything in the next 45 minutes by just listening to me. You're gonna learn and embody a new wisdom if you actually take the moment to be present right here, right now. So if you're doing something else, just stop and come all the way into the room. Put both feet in, both hands in, both eyes are on, both ears are open. Your whole heart is here. If you're just here halfway, it's not going to do anything. And we're going to talk about how that's showing up in your content and how that's showing up in your brand and how that's potentially holding you back from not just reaching, but speaking and being heard by the people that you want to hear you. So with that, we're going to dive in. Today's live training is called Branded. And we're going to go on a few different rides throughout the next 45 minutes. But the overarching theme is there is content that is one of many. And there is content that is one of a kind. Your job as an entrepreneur is to understand the difference, to master the difference, and to continuously develop your craft to be the difference. Your job as a creative entrepreneur, and I don't mean creative in the sense that you need to be doing paintings and drawings and using your hands. You can be creative intellectually, creative as a visionary, creative in the way that you bring your ideas to the world. But if you're an entrepreneur, you are creative. You have decided to raise your hand and take something that didn't exist and create it and bring it to the world in the form of a solution, in the form of a product, in the form of a service, in the form of a program, in the form of a piece of content. 
And your job is to understand the difference between content that is one of many and content that is one of a kind. That's the whole reason why we're here right now is to understand what that actually means for you. There's something that I'm seeing in this industry that I think we all get to start paying attention to. When I start to feel things happen in the industry, I always look to the other industries around this one. Because nine times out of 10, we're just following our industry. If you're in the coaching industry, you're likely following other coaches and you're so deep in the coaching industry that that's what you see on social media. It's what you're reading on other social media platforms. It's what you're creating. It's what you're bringing to life. So it's so important as a leader to open up your eyes and see what's happening in the other industries because they're all deeply connected. They're going to tell a bigger story and you'll start to see where we are playing out other themes that are happening in the world. And then as leaders and innovators, we can make those changes and course correct. So if you see me look over to the right, it's because I have a lot of notes and I want to make sure that we get through everything that came through for me yesterday. This masterclass was built in the last 24 hours. Over 200 of your notifications were on. I said something dropped in like wildfire. I named it, put some text together, and we're all here right now. So this is a very fast transmission. And so when we move today, you're going to feel speed pulse through your body. You're going to feel momentum shift you. You might start to sweat. You might start to yawn. All of those are signs that my voice is shifting your reality and that you are giving me consent to change the way you feel when it comes to your brand online. So if you're not in a space right now to let that rock your world, I'd highly recommend setting up some time and revisiting this after because I'm going to put the replay on my YouTube channel and you can subscribe and then get the notification. So the first thing that I want to go into is why this exists and why we're talking about this today. This masterclass live stream, whatever you want to call it, is specifically for the creatives in the coaching industry. The creatives in the coaching industry are the artists at heart. So yes, we are business women, we're CEOs, and we have coaching programs and we have a company that we lead, but at the core and at the heart of it, we are passionate artists. We have a love for business and a wisdom for business, but if we weren't doing what we're doing right now, we would likely be writing books, creating films using our hands, bringing beauty, grace, and love to the world in different ways, in different shapes, in different colors, in different types, in different sounds, in different words. We just happen to fall in love with business. We happen to fall in love with the entrepreneurial journey. It was the journey that allowed us to be who we really are. It was the journey of the maverick, the innovator, where there were no rules. There were no, you should do it this way or you should do it that way. So our artist heart was like, yes, I'll go start a business where nobody can tell me what to do. I can just be free and fly. And then that business found the coaching industry. And we started to get excited that we could actually change the world. Like we didn't just have a business, but we could actually help human beings. That our art could actually improve someone else's life because it improved our life that our bigness didn't have to be hidden, that we could celebrate publicly, we could talk about money, we could have open, honest conversations about leadership and all the things that make our heart feel on fire. Yes, I'm in for the coaching industry. This is where I will continue to express my art. And then over the years, the coaching industry started to feel like a box. And two things happened to the Mavericks. They started to either feel like outsiders, like how do I get back? I started with this, it felt like we could change the world and now I'm noticing that there's hierarchy. Now I'm feeling like there's rules, like I'm being manipulated, like I need to do it this way or I need to do it that way. And there's two things that happen, we either rebel, fuck the industry, I'm gonna tell you everything that's wrong with the industry. Even though I'm still partaking in it, I'm gonna bitch about it, complain about it, point out all the things that are wrong with it. And I'm going to do it in pretty fonts and I'm an artist and I'm going to make it beautiful. But I'm going to point out everything that's wrong. And then the other path is I'm going to try my hardest to fit into this industry. It's where I've dedicated the most amount of time. I see so much potential in it. I'm going to do my best to fit in. I'm going to figure out the algorithm. I'm going to figure out how to create content that people can see. I don't know what's working, what's not working, but I'm going to try my hardest. So those are the two paths that so many artists in this industry have taken. Today, we're opening up a whole new path. And we don't have to burn down those other paths for this new one to be built. We just get to choose. 
Your choice changes your environment immediately. Your environment is your environment until you choose a different one. Today, we're choosing a different environment. Because what's happening in our industry is we are so hyper-focused on figuring it out that it's killing the artist's soul. And we're forgetting the mastery that we truly have within us. Social media is not going anywhere. So that's not what this live stream is about. This is about going from creating content online from an online platform for an online platform. That's what most people are doing. They're creating content online from an online platform, using an online platform for an online platform. So everything's online. And when they do it that way, we continue to turn our content creation into content perpetuation. To perpetuate something is to just do the same thing again and again and again, rinse and repeat. And then what we start to see on a larger scale is that your content looks like their content looks like the industry's content. And we're just regurgitating that and spinning that out. And then the artists are feeling starved. The artists are feeling bored. The artists are feeling angry and frustrated. Like, what the heck are we doing? Why does everything look the same? Why does everything just sound the exact same? Why is it the same this and the same that? I'm going crazy. I want nothing to do with this anymore. Or I'm just going to try to do it my way, but I feel lonely. So that's what we're starting to see now in stage two of this content perpetuation. We're just perpetuating the same thing. And we're numb and we're not doing it in a conscious way. It's subconsciously happening. That person did it and they were successful. So let me do it a little bit like that and a little bit different and then that'll also be successful. And then we have this very repetitive, dull, dead industry content. What we're going to learn today and I'm going to teach you the what and why is the process of innovating content in person for online purposes. This is a huge shift that I made in the last 16, 18 months that turned my six-figure business into a seven-figure brand. If you are an artist in this space and you are an entrepreneurial spirit, you are not here to just run a business. You're here to lead a brand. And we're going to talk about why that gives your artist permission to fully explode and expand. So I'm going to say it one more time because this can be a little bit of a mind twister. We're going to be talking about what it means to innovate content in person from your brand for online purposes versus creating content online using an online platform for an online platform. So we're going from online, online, online to in-person brand for my online community. And what that does is it adds heart and a pulse and an aliveness back to your business that I know deep down you are craving. I don't care how much money you make. I don't care how much success you've had. You're likely not tired. You're exhausted of the continuous stream of consumption versus getting up, innovating, and leading because you're so afraid that you're gonna lose followers or that you're not gonna make it or that that person's gonna go ahead of you or that that person's gonna out earn you or that her milestone's gonna make her look like a better coach so you better continue to perpetuate and create online so you can kind of keep up with that energy and make sure you're relevant and your innovative spirit dies again and again and again and you're bored and you're complete and you're just about on the edge of like, potentially just not giving a fuck anymore. And so today, my biggest request is that you care again. Please care. Please don't just check out intellectually, emotionally, and physically. Here's why a lot of people will end up checking out. Because it takes mental fortitude to go from online, 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 to in-person, to brand for online purposes. It takes mental fortitude fortitude. It takes effort and it takes an, a certain amount of hard work, dare I say it. And Madison, I'm so happy you mentioned that. Madison and I worked on her brand for 
our time together. And it is, it is insane how much aliveness I feel from Madison's brand, her voice, the way that she speaks, the offers she's putting out are magnificent. The way that she's telling her stories, the way that she's selling multiple offers at once, the way she's just streamed, like she is in her lane. You can feel it. You can feel her momentum. Nothing's bothering her. She is doing her thing. She is alive. She is ready. She is vital. She is moving. She is breathing. That is one of the biggest shifts that entrepreneurs, especially if you're creatives and you're passionate and you're artistic and you have that nature to you, this is where you get to return. So let's get into the actual teachings. This is where you may want to take some notes. I'm going to write down or I'm going to read off a few different definitions that are going to support the vocabulary that we use to make this shift. We use certain vocabulary to code in new beliefs in my world. So we'll usually use the dictionary as a, a reference point of what does that mean? And then what do I want it to mean? What does that mean? And then what do I want it to mean? So I'm going to mention a few different words. And then there's a certain person that really inspired this masterclass for me. And that invited me into really discovering what I'm going to teach you today for myself. He's a, a total mogul in the advertising space, John Haggerty. Not everything he says I totally agree with, but there's a lot of spice and beauty to what he says, and we're going to use it and apply it to our industry because our industry is on the up and we're growing rapidly and there's so many hands that are in the ring and there's so many beautiful things that are happening, but we're still very young. We've grown fast, but we're still incredibly young. And this is going to be an opportunity for all of us to have our part in where this whole thing goes. So we're going from the continuous perpetuation of creating online, focusing on preserving your followers versus pioneering a path for them. So that's something you get to observe within yourself. Where am I posting to preserve my followers because I think they're going to leave or they are temporary or something's going to dramatically shift within my engagement versus pioneering a new path for my people? Because they're not wanting you to preserve them and post things that are going to preserve them. They're not like, here, I have an expiration date on them. Please post and tell by when. They're waiting for you to pioneer a new path for them. They're waiting for you to blaze a new trail, to do something different. Whenever I post something new online, my biggest prayer is the, you on the other side of the screen say thank you. Thank you for doing something just a little bit different, for showing up differently on my feed, for offering a different piece of work to the space. This not only inspired me, but it caused movement within me. That's the biggest compliment that I could hear as a creator, because I'm not creating to preserve you. I'm creating to pioneer. And what that does is it gives me permission to, to create for and from my brand, knowing that it's not going to be for everybody and it's not meant to be for everyone. So the more that I try to make it for everyone to preserve everything, the less and less and less my genius can come through and fly and flutter and do the things that it's meant to do to shake and wake and move and bring life to the social media app. Where we're headed is creating content in person. And most of the reasons why we stopped doing that is because we've been told not to leave the house the last few years. But nobody's going to knock on our door and say, hey, it's all over. You can leave your house now. Everybody has to make that choice again for themselves. And everybody has a different circumstance and a different set of beliefs. And there's so much there. We're not going to get into that in this class. But there's so much there that you get to personally move through. But as a creative, as an entrepreneur, there's going to come a time where it's like, all right, I get to get back in the game. I get to leave my visibility comfort zone. I get to exit and push not just the edges of my consciousness, not just continuously strengthening the mindset and how I think and how I believe, but I get to push the edges of my visibility comfort zone. I get to open up beyond what I believe I can be seen and known for. That will require me to leave the screen. If I only create from the screen through the screen, my art dies. The moment I start to create in person, in my life, and then from my brand, deliver that to an online platform is the moment my content buzzes with aliveness, is the moment there's a heartbeat behind the words, is the moment people don't just read it, but they feel it because I created it with my human flesh. 
I didn't just regurgitate a trend. I didn't just repeat that because they told me post this every single day. I didn't just fill in the blank. I didn't just add it to the template. I stretched myself to go to the lake and film this. I moved myself onto the plane and I made it to the room to discover who I really was. I had myself on camera from afar. I stretched myself to get the photo shoot done and then to be a little bit extra and get a makeup artist and to try on different shapes and different voices and different outfits fits so I could see who I really am beyond just the screen and then from my brand I decided to deliver that to the online platform to serve my people and pioneer a new path and then I'm back out in the world again and I come to deliver and my life is my brand it's not separate it is a sequence that gets expressed effortlessly that is where your next breakthrough lives And if you continue to stay in front of the screen, hovered over all the data, you lose the wisdom that your brand is trying so deeply to exude from you. It's never going to happen any other way. I've tried it. I've experimented with it myself. Last year, I took myself on this journey. I left the screen. I filmed an entire documentary, I believe Get a Helmet's on here now. I flew them out. Every single thing I said yes to felt like, is this a waste of money? Is this too big of a deal? Who the hell am I to be interviewed? Who the hell am I to have a debut for a documentary? Why am I creating these videos? Is this too much work? Is this too much effort? What if nobody likes this? What if this completely misses the algorithm? What if Instagram never posts it? What if this was all just a waste? These are all the thoughts that I know are going through your head because they went through my head as I actually moved into them and did the thing anyways. And this is where most people will stay in their visibility comfort zone because God forbid you put forth effort, the extra effort. Yes, I'll change the font. Yes, I'll move move off the screen and move into the room. Yes, I'll fly them out. Yes, I'll do that extra thing, which sends out the signal that I'm important. I'm a big deal. What I have to say matters. I'm here to not just be a maverick, but a mogul. I'm not an outsider. I'm a creative. I'm an innovator. I'm a pioneer. So of course, mic me up. Of course, bring me on the stage. Of course, I'm going to do it before anybody else does it. Of course, I'm going to set the trend. I'm not going to follow it. And then those questions, that doubt becomes a whisper. And you realize that your biggest fear was not putting in the effort and wasting the money. Your fear is that you'll be embarrassed. Your fear is that if you put forth all that effort, it's going to be a waste. You'll be rejected. Nobody's going to like it. That fear is not the fear of your inner mogul. That fear is not the fear of your inner leader. That is the fear of the small-minded human that can't fully grasp what you're actually here to do. And the only way to break that part of you through is to step onto the stage, mic yourself up and do the damn thing anyways and discover who you are in the process. And then what happened after we filmed, after we created this, after we brought this to life, I have never felt more exposed in my entire career. This was more than vulnerability. This was more than intimacy. This was me willingly exposing myself for you and with you. This is what turned my business into a brand that thousands of humans will never forget. I could stop right now. I could retire today. And every time you see somebody say body leads, mind follows, you'll think of Victoria Washington. Every time you see shake and tremble as you speak, but what we're not going to do is allow doubt to dismantle your destiny. Every time you read those words, you'll hear my voice. I could stop right now. And every single time you see that video, you'll immediately get goosebumps. Every time you hear those words, you will immediately think of me. That is because my brand has taken up real estate in your psyche, that our hearts are forever connected, not because I made it so, but because I willingly exposed myself to you. I exposed my throat to you. I exposed my soul to you because I care about our humanity and I'll stop at nothing to create art with you. Not to post content, not to just build a video, but to tell a story that lives on forever and beyond my business. 
This is the shift from business to brand. This is the shift that so many of you are trying to grasp and understand. And my prayer, my deepest prayer is that through this live training, it at least wakes you up to the breakthrough and the awareness of what the path actually looks like. Because what I'm doing right now, not a lot of people are doing. The things I'm launching right now, not a lot of people are launching. Seven, the mastermind, which I'm actually taking seven women who are scaling to seven figures through this process of taking them from their rooms. They're flying on a plane to San Diego. We have two in-person business and brand retreats. We have a creative team they're going to be partnering with. It's a mastermind that we're going to be partly doing virtually where we look at their brand. We look at the heartbeat. We ask, what do you want to be known for? Where can you push your creative edges? This is a journey that some women are going to be taking this year. And it's scary. Because what it's asking them to do is not just expand their consciousness, but to expand how much they're willing to expose themselves. So on a bigger scale, if you are at the six-figure mark and you want to scale into seven figures, seven still has some spaces available. You can DM me to apply. And if you're not quite at six figures, you're in the process of scaling to six figures, by the end, I'm going to have something to share with you so that you can take that journey in a different way. But there's two more things that I want to look at today. We're not even halfway done. This is the art of increasing not your income, but your craft. And as an artist, you're going to continuously be tempted in this industry to focus on increasing your income. And if you focus on increasing your income, you will likely go back into the perpetual state of online content from online platform for online platform, rinse and repeat until I increase my income and then I have the amount of money that I want and then I'm tired and I don't like the brand that I'm in because I've created a business that's not sustainable because I've created a brand that's not me. I'm known for something that I don't even want to be known for. What if there is a different way? What if instead of increasing your income, you spent the year increasing your craft? I'm going to read you the dictionary definition of craft and why it's one of the most coded words when it comes to artistry. Craft, by definition, refers to works done where the imagination and the hand of the maker are evident. They're known. Often the value of of a piece in the workmanship of the artist is here rather than what it's made of. What that means is it has to do with more of how you're using your hands and your body and your life, your imagination to create, not what, Canva, the font, the online platforms that you're creating from are resources and tools, but they will never forget your, they will never replace your imagination. Your imagination is what you are not using. You're using data, you're using calculated things that you can see through the online platform versus your imagination to increase your craft. So as I was studying and I was looking at this for my own brand and in my own journey last year, I started to feel into my body of what does it look like for me to use my imagination? But if all I'm doing is consuming other people's content, and then I'm also on top of that being told that I have to create content like this to make it, and that to stay relevant, I have to do it in a certain way, I don't have to use my imagination. All I have to do is hop on the reel, do the trend how they said it in the tutorial, and then post it. I get a whole applause. It goes viral. I think that I did a good thing. Then I do it again, and I do it again. And I realized that, okay, this is cool, but it doesn't feel like anything. So this is where we shift from the increase in data to the increase in your imagination. Last month, or no, it was three months ago, actually, me and my sister, who I brought on as my co-creator in, in our creative direction, we created a reel that nobody had ever done before. I was shifting my brand and telling people that something new was coming. So that was the message I wanted to send with my brand. I wanted people to know that there was like a new evolution. So I changed my name. The the colors were starting to change. The energy was starting to change. But I wanted to give them a visual understanding of what I was really doing. I wanted to show them that I was here to expose myself and get naked, to get creatively naked with you. So before we shut down the Instagram, we did a reset. 
And then we posted one reel, it was 30 seconds. And in it, I had the camera on the floor and I took my pants off so you could see that I took my pants off. Then I moved the camera up, I took my shirt off, I turned around, I took my hat off, I took my sweater off, you could see everything falling to the ground. This did not take a lot of time to even edit, it was very simple. But I wanted to tell the story of I was getting undressed, like behind the scenes. Then I added a filter on it where you could see it through the TV box. So it looked like you were watching like an old 90s TV film. And in the caption, I said, I am willingly exposing myself to you. I added some text. I added some poetry. I added what I wanted the, the imagery to feel like through words. And then I did a voiceover so you could hear the volume of my throat meeting that energy. The whole thing took more effort than all the experts told me to put in. They should only take this, it should only take this. Spend more time on the editing, spend more time on this. But I put in the extra effort so that you could feel the story that I was committed to telling. I had no idea if you were gonna get it. I had no idea if you were gonna even like it. You could, I literally looked at my sister and said, people are gonna probably think we're crazy. Like this doesn't make any sense. They're gonna be scrolling reels and then they're gonna see me getting undressed and they're gonna hear this voiceover. And they're going to read these words and be like, why is this person so deep? It's too deep. And in that moment, I posted it. And the comments, the conversations were revolutionary. You each got it. You didn't just get it, but you felt it. There was messages of refreshing energy of I've never seen something like that of I really see where you're taking us now. I understand where you just came from. In 30 seconds, I told the story. The beautiful part is people used to enjoy this more than anything. Back in the 90s and the 2000s, a 30 second commercial that landed a message would be globally known. There were awards for these commercials and all the advertisers and the art directors, they spent so much time using their imagination and honing in on their craft to tell a story in 30 seconds and really land the plane and do something different. So one thing that John Haggerty says that I love is that great creative people are outsiders. As soon as you're on the inside, you stop being able to challenge the status quo. Great creative people are outsiders. Last year, I decided I'm meant to be an outsider, that the moment I'm in this industry is the moment I stop stop challenging the status quo, is the moment that I actually delay my genius. But if I continue to follow a trend, to stay relevant in this industry, my creative soul dies. Every single time you choose a trend over your truth, a part of your innovative spirit dies. Every single time you try to fit your voice in a box, your innovative spirit shrinks. So you can look at the 30 seconds as, oh, this is limiting, or you can look at it as this is my opportunity to challenge the status quo in the shortest amount of period of time as possible. How can I exude my genius out and use my imagination? Because most of the time when I need to go beyond 30 seconds, I'm over explaining versus expressing potently. Potent expression only takes about 0.2 seconds to enter the psyche of somebody who's witnessing it. Explanation takes a lot longer and that's what a lot of people are doing online is they're explaining themselves so that they can become relevant in this industry versus accepting that as a creative, I'm meant to be on the outside. I'm meant to be an outsider who is challenging the status quo and paving new paths and allowing that to be a huge part of my brand. The moment I'm in is the moment I have to shrink is the moment I have to go into an over explanation of why I'm here. He goes on to say that business at its core is creative. What we're seeing in the big advertising industry, if we look at brands like Pepsi, Audi, Coca-Cola, these brands have become obsessed with stalking their consumers versus inspiring them. When you're stalking your consumers, you're focusing on the data You're focusing on what did they like? When did they like it? How did they like it? At what point in the video did they like it? We get obsessed with stalking their response to our work versus focusing on inspiring as an innovative leader, our audience. 
So what's happening on the bigger scale of advertising and marketing is also happening on a micro scale in the coaching industry. Where have you become obsessed with stalking content versus inspiring your people through your imagination? This is a huge, important shift. The next piece that he says is that technology is an enhancement, not a lead. This is where a lot of the old school advertisers got nervous about social media. It wasn't because they weren't open to technology, social media channels. The opportunity to go live right now with you is because of technology. This is because of technology. But it was never meant to be a lead. And right now, technology is leading a lot of your lives. That's why it's leading your brand and your content. But when you flip it and you use technology as an enhancement to the creative process, versus leading the creative process, you allow something completely new to come through. You drop back into your innovative soul and you allow the online platform to just be an opportunity to deliver the art to more people versus I must need to right now create it on the online platform, technology is king. This is another huge shift. Technology is not here to lead your business or your brand. Your life is here to lead your business and your brand. And technology is an enhancement, an elevation to how you can deliver the message. Okay, next step. And I'm seeing some questions pop up. So let me just see these before we go on any further. Because usually I'm just channeling. Let's see. This is insanely in line with what I'm going through right now. Oh my goodness, I'm so glad. I'm not reading anything. I'm, I'm, this is stream of consciousness. But if you wanted to reference the person that I'm, I'm talking about in this that I've been studying is John Haggerty. He's one of the moguls in the advertising space. So I've been studying bigger brands. And this is a recommendation for any entrepreneur. Get out of your industry and study other brands. Study the way that other industries are going. And you'll see on a micro scale how it could be showing up in this industry. So we're going to keep flowing. I want to ask you a question and bring something to your awareness to support with you integrating this. One of the questions that I want you to ask is, while it's on brand for me to do things in a certain way on Instagram, is it on brand for me? So you have to remember that Instagram is a brand. Instagram is its own brand, its own platform, its own thing. So it's on brand for you to do things a certain way for Instagram. Instagram's like, great, we're, this is working. The people are doing that and the people are doing that and the people are doing that and this is on brand for us. We are upholding our brand values. We're upholding what we said we we're gonna do. We've pioneered a new path. They're doing the thing that we said we're gonna do. And then you are your own brand and your job as a leader of that brand is to ask, okay, I know it's on brand for Instagram for me to do it that way, but is it on brand for me? Is it on brand for me to do it this way? Or is there another way that I want to use the brand of Instagram to enhance my brand versus me just enhance Instagram's brand? This is a huge shift in your relationship with Instagram, with Facebook, with the other platforms that you use. They already have it rolled out for you to do it in a certain way. Today I'm on the live stream on Instagram but I've decided to use it as an enhancement for the message. I wanted to get this message out to as many people as possible. So I didn't go and create online. I went into the lake. I went and wrote. I got some notes. I did some studying in my life. I did this whole thing in my actual brand myself last year. Every single thing I'm teaching you right now, you're hearing me teach it the way that I am because I just walked it. I just lived it in my life. So if you have the temptation to take something from this masterclass and post it on a, a Instagram post and then share it as if it's your own, you're going back to, I'm online creating from an online source for an online platform. And you don't do it on purpose, you're doing it subconsciously. And it's not like a, oh my gosh, I wanna copy that or I wanna regurgitate that, but it's what happens. We're pulling from programs. We're pulling from live streams. We're pulling from what we saw that person say. And then we're putting our own little twist on it, aka changing a couple of words, and then we're posting it as our own. And we're wondering why everything looks the same. Because we're online, online, online. 
So everything I'm teaching right now, I lived in my life first before I ever decided to open my mouth and share it with you. I filmed a documentary. I tried on different reels. I started to create more with my hands in my actual life. I built the brand with actual paper, pen, body, heart, soul, and then I delivered it online. I've gone and pushed my visibility edges. I've moved and invested in different ways. I've changed up the way that I do things every single month. I'm constantly utilizing my imagination. I'm every single day not choosing the trend. I'm all the time in my life exercising my truth. And now... On May 17th, I got the green light to share it with you. But you've been watching me do this for a long time. So that's why there's already credibility in me speaking it to you and sharing it with you. So if you took something from this class and then just shared it as if it were a version of yours, even if you've been thinking on the same wavelength as me, you're doing what you are not You're doing the same thing that you're complaining about, which is why does everything look the same? Well, because people are creating their online content from online sources. And then that person created from another online source. So we're just doing the perpetuation again. So my challenge for you, my request, is that if you're going to share this, just share the video with your people and mention one of your biggest takeaways. And then go live your life and activate it in your actual life. Leave the screen, turn off the Instagram app, and go practice this with your heart and your body and your eyes and your ears. Go do this in your actual life and see how it comes to fruition. Because in that are different wisdoms and different memories and different teachings that would be completely new and innovative. And that's what you actually want to be known for. That's what you actually want to be seen for. A lot of you don't feel heard, not because you aren't saying something powerful, but you're not saying it from your own power center. You're saying it at, from a connection with somebody else's power center. And by the time it comes out of your mouth, it's dulled and not fully alive. But when it comes straight from your channel, it's provocative and edgy and has its own divine coding to it. So a question that I want you to sit with is, is it on brand for me to do it in the way that I'm doing it? I know it's going to work for Instagram. I know that it's going to be beautiful for the algorithm. I know that people are saying like this is really picking up speed, but is this on brand for me? And then deeper than that, what is my brand? What does my brand stand for? Your life leads your brand. So what does your brand represent for the world? This was a huge question that I brought to life in my company last year. I looked at the team and I said, here's what we want to represent in the world. Here's what the brand, whether I'm here or not, whether I'm physically saying body leads, mind follows. Let's say one of our facilitators is saying it. Let's say Jess and Corey are saying it. Let's say one of our House of We members is saying it. I still want them to feel me and what it represents, whether I'm physically there or not. And as an artist, that's true freedom, is I don't need to be always having my hand on the wheel for the work to be known, for the work to be seen, for the work to be heard. It creates a life of its own. So back to the original starting point, there's content that is one of many. It just disappears within 24 hours. It's a flippant story that you put on. It's this that you post. It just becomes one of the many content that's spiraling and circulating through the internet. And then there's content that is one of a kind that takes on a life of its own. And that's where there's freedom between you and your creative genius. That's when you know that your creative genius is fully flying through the world and your life is just adding to it. Your life is leading it. Your life is putting fire to the flame. Your life is adding wind. Your life is adding water. Your life is adding elemental changes and environmental changes and different things are coming alive and the imagination is coming alive. This is where your true peace, your true satisfaction, your true innovation starts to come off the screen is when you live it off the screen. The last thing that I want to bring to your awareness is the final most important piece. 
This is the process of understanding what branded actually means. So there's content and then there's branded content. Again, your job is to continuously sharpen your craft, increase the amount of time you're dedicating to your creative channel, increase the amount of time you're sitting with your soul truth, increasing the amount of time you're spending with just you so that you can hear it and understand it for yourself and then create branded content from that place. When we look at the dictionary definition of branded, what we see is branding is the process of giving meaning to, to a specific company, product, or service by creating and shaping a brand in the consumer's mind. So in part one of my post, how I turned my six-figure business into a seven-figure brand, one of the quotes that I put on there from John Haggerty is that brand, a brand is one of the most important pieces of real estate in the world. It's a corner of someone's mind. Body leads, mind follows, takes up the corner of about a thousand, at least a thousand humans' minds. There's women who have used that mantra while giving birth. I have videos of moms who have sent me micro videos of their kids saying body leads, mind follows. I have videos of women using it in their workouts, on their walks. I have testimonials of people using it when they're in a fight with their family or they're having a moment with their spouse. They use body leads, mind follows. It is taking up a piece of real estate in someone's mind. Whether I'm physically there or not, the real estate has been built because the brand is alive. So that's not just content. That was me very skillfully using my craft to create branded content. That type of content, you can replicate it all you want, but it's never going to be the original piece of real estate. You can copy it, you could flip it, you could add a little something to it, but it's never going to take up the original piece of real estate and the source that that real estate came from. So this is your challenge after this training, and I'm going to give you a couple spaces where you can continue to practice this, is creating not just content, but branded content. This is going to have your business go further, higher, and in such a direction of delight. This is where you become known, recognized, and not just seen and read and listened to. This is where you actually hold a piece of someone's attention, whether they're on the screen or off the screen. This is where your voice goes through the tidal waves of noise and captures the heart of the human you're meant to exchange with. This is the biggest difference between content that will disappear in 24 hours to content that takes on a life of its own. And that type of content doesn't need you pushing or forcing or fitting into a trend. It's the type of content that takes courage and bravery. It takes, here, let me try this thing on. Let me just pop up and do this photo shoot. Okay, I'm getting a hit. I got to follow it. Doesn't make any sense. It's going to take extra effort. It's going to be an extra hour of my day. Does it actually matter if the font is that color? Does it matter if I add that little detail? Yes, it does. That's part of the story. Branded content will always take more effort and mental fortitude than just regular content. And some of you are going to leave this live stream and just continue to create on the trend and you'll go far and have a lot of followers. And then others are going to leave this free training and go make it their commitment to create branded content. They're going to put forth the effort regardless of if they're embarrassed, regardless of anybody gets it right away. They're going to have the bravery and the courage that every artist truly has to go make a name for themselves and continue to allow their life to be an expression of, of their brand. You have a choice right after this to go back to just doing the regular old thing or scrapping it and being like, hang on a second, how can I use my imagination? Where have I allowed my genius to just die? Where have I not picked up the microphone and actually given myself a chance to see what I really want to say? Because I'm so worried about making sure people even see my content. When you're in the creative genius and you're on set in your life creating at a level of holy shit you're not worried about people seeing you when i was filming my documentary when i'm doing my photo shoots with my clients when we're doing things that are like insane 
When we're like, yeah, take that off, move that. Yeah, let's try this outfit. Let's change the way you're dressing to change the way you're embodying the mood. Let's try this facial expression. Let's add this layer of editing. Let's try this on. Let me experience my craft. The last thing you're thinking about is will they like it? And will Instagram make sure it's seen? You're like, this is the coolest freaking thing in the whole wide world. Just because I saw it, it's enough. Just because the people on set witnessed it, it's enough. Nobody ever has to see this. I did this with my G-Wagon. When I first bought my G-Wagon, I took it to the sunset. I did a whole photo shoot with it. You guys have seen one of those pictures. But I didn't create it because I needed you to see it. I created it because I needed to feel it in my body. I needed to feel that purchase. I didn't want it to just become another car that I got. I drove that bitch to the ocean and said, this was a really big deal. This is a moment I will remember for the rest of my life. This is a car I never thought I'd ever, ever, ever be able to drive or bring into fruition. So I hired a photographer. She met me at the ocean. I cried in the car. We played with the shadow, the way the sun hit the window. I'll never forget when we got the shot where she could see me through the window and you can also see the ocean at the same time. And we stood right at the edge of the cliff and we celebrated the shot that captured the moment of a lifetime. And you'll never even see that shot. That shot was from my heart. It was from my creative genius to feel alive in that purchase. And now what you're witnessing is an embodied woman who shamelessly uses her wealth for good in the world, who purchases what she wants when she wants it, who teaches others and brings things to life without apologies. You don't need to see the shot, you're looking at it. But the only way that I could embody it is if I went to the ocean is if I hired the creative team, is if I brought it to life in my own being. And then anything I say from that point is alive with it. This is the intrinsic creative code that no one can give you but you. This is the journey of the artist and it is the journey of a lifetime. You just happen to have a love of business you happen to be savvy at the way that you put things online and you're going to continue to do that. Not every single piece of content is going to be branded, holy crap content, but I'm asking you to increase it to about from 5% to 80%. Let it be 80% branded content, 20% just content that comes through really simply. It's nothing. It's just like it's there. It, it keeps things moving. The regular content keeps the channel moving. And then boom, you get hit. Hold on, the lighting. Hold on, what I'm wearing right now. Hold on, the wind. Hold on, I just got this idea. Hold on, I just saw that trend and I want to rework it. I want to flip it on its head. Go with those urges. Go with that call. Because that journey is going to enhance everything. And so many of you are saying, no, I don't have time. I don't have money. I don't have the creativity. I don't have the team to execute it. But you haven't even tried to put your hands on it yourself. You've just decided that's not for you. It's easier to just screenshot the notes section of my phone and put it up there because then everybody will read the thing. But we have a lot of people reading online and not actually retaining anything. So it might be seen by a lot of people, but it's known by no one. So this is why I'm teaching you this. This is the biggest difference. People ask me all the time, how do I not get stressed out by the, the social media stuff? How do, I not, how do I not worry about it? How do I just continue to create and continue to innovate? Because I am a leader and you are a leader. I'm an innovator. You're an innovator. Our main purpose is to continuously make sure we're not overstimulated and to keep our channel clean so we can hear the call. And in that same breath, we're here to trust ourselves. As you trust yourself, you trust the other people who are meant to join you in that journey. So If you're on this live stream right now, I want you to write down a commitment that you'll make to yourself. And as you make this commitment to yourself, you're making it to the creative spirit of your business and the innovative soul that is potentially overstimulated right now. She's not confused. 
She's just overstimulated. And she needs to return back to the silent brilliance of her voice. And what you can count on from me as a leader in this space and as somebody who coaches and mentors is when you get in front of me, all I want you to hear is you and God. My prayer before I ever open up my mouth is let there be none of me and all of you and God. I know that my work is done when you say you feel closer to you, not me. When you thank you and your channel, when you trust you and your relationship with the soul of your business. That's how I know that as innovators, we have shaken hands, rubbed shoulders and decided to walk together versus, oh my gosh, you did something for me because then you're back in the perpetuation of online to online to online to online to online to online. So if you decide to continue from this live stream into another journey, there's two other opportunities, three actually. We have seven, which is for six figure entrepreneurs who are scaling to seven figures. We're gonna do it in a non-traditional way. This is a mastermind, but it's everything that a mastermind isn't. Nobody's doing this. You're gonna be meeting virtually for Zoom calls and all the regular things, but we have two in-person business and brand retreats. We're gonna be taking everything that I just taught and bringing it to life. You're gonna be redefining your creative edge, redefining your brand and deciding what you wanna be known for. The seven figures is a byproduct. The seven figures is gonna mean nothing when you feel on top of the world in your voice and in your brand. So we have some spots open for that. You can DM me to apply. It is a five figure investment and it makes most sense if you're already at six figures. The other two options are a new mastermind that's coming for women who are scaling into six figures. So if you're not quite at six figures yet, but you wanna do this creative work, we have a new brand offer that is happening for women who are specifically scaling to six figures. I'm going to reveal the name soon. I'm not quite there yet, but we just nailed the name. It just came to me yesterday, and I'm going to be sharing that soon. If you want to get on the waitlist for that, DM me waitlist, and we'll get you on the waitlist for, for that mastermind. The final opportunity to do this is either in person or online. You can do vocal codes, which is a, a micro mind where we focus on brand expansion using your voice. So if you show up on live, if you use your voice in your programs, if you use your voice in your content, Vocal Codes is for you. We're going to be talking about authentic transmissions and using your voice as a way to expand your brand. This is for all levels. And if you aren't at six figures, it's especially powerful for you because this is where I recommend starting. It's starting with your voice, starting with attuning your instrument, your body, starting with truly creating intellectual property that is unique to you. So Vocal Codes is open for pre-sale. It's 2,222 and you can DM me or my team for the link. And then of course we have Holy Yes live in person. If you wanna take the biggest journey of a lifetime and meet me in person in San Diego, but you don't wanna, if you're not at the point of seven where you're gonna do the whole mastermind part, you can come to Holy Yes live July 17th. We're gonna be journeying for a full day. It's gonna be wealth, God, branding, transmissions. Everything is gonna be coming together in that room. Those tickets are 888 until Sunday. And then after that, they're gonna go up to 1,111. So that link is also available in my bio. So you got options. There's no, there's no reason for you to be confused as to where you can go next. And if right now you're like, I just wanna sit with this, this feels really alive, I'm gonna do my own thing, that's amazing too. But if you wanted to continue the ride and wanted to deepen, these options are available for you. I am so grateful that we got to spend this time together and I believe I got through all of my notes. Let me see here. I did. I got through all of my notes. What I want you to do is comment your biggest takeaway on the YouTube channel. That's where I'm going to upload the replay and continue this conversation with me in the DMs. Let me know what came alive for you. I want to hear what opened for you today because this could actually shift not just your life, but I believe the whole industry. I believe we want to have more fun. I believe we want to feel more unique artistry come online. I believe we're sick of seeing the same words. We're sick of seeing the same thing. We're sick of seeing the same, the same lexicon just regurgitated again and again. I believe that we're really ready to call ourselves forward and call this industry forward and bringing a new tone and a new rhythm to the table. That's where most of us started in the first place is I'm going to join forces with an industry where I can be my complete self and change the world at the same time. 
That's why I said yes to this. So I invite you to return back to that with your full faith and trust that when you show up from this place, people don't just see you. They remember your name. And that's what I know each of you want deep down. So thank you for being here live. All There was like 90 of you live the whole time. I love you with every bone in my body. I'm so grateful that I get to serve in this way. Thank you, God, for this transmission, for bringing you to the table so we could exchange in this way. I will see you in the next ride. And if there's any questions, you can DM me or my team. I'll see you soon.